So I would like to ask you, how many of you have seen these videos online about the Sanskari Bahu, the Sushil Indian Bride, and we shared those videos, taking us a that, sort of a, a mimical uh, outlook towards how the Indian Bride has been portrayed in all of our lives, in all of our coming, I mean, in terms of new age, which is being seeing this wife, but they're not really putting her where they sh ideally should be. So what we're doing here is, we are introducing you to Asvita Ghosh, who works in Feminism in India, an online feminist platform. She had a she had a twist with fame in college, in the last year of college, when she made a video called Be A Pondati. It was actually making fun of all that people have put ahead in India and how they've seen the Indian wife. So we have her today showing us and introducing us to the subcultures of feminism that exist online in India today. And uh, I work at Feminism in India, as uh, he mentioned, which is an online feminist platform where uh, women write about uh, what they can, not just women, um, other marginalized genders and communities, write about what they want to. But uh, so today, like he mentioned, um, I made this video which went uh, kind of viral, but I want to situate that in this larger context of how um, feminists or um, there are feminist subcultures on the internet which sort of fight back or take back the tech, reclaim the internet from all the sexist um, spaces that exist on online right now. So, so uh, my first question is, how many of you identify as a feminist? Can I have a show of hands? Like, up. Yeah? Okay. Um, I understand why um, some people may not because I think the word feminism or the concept feminism has been misconstrued and gotten a lot of negative press but feminism at its heart and what it actually means is just the equality of genders and acknowledging the fact that right now it isn't, we aren't equal and there is a mismatch that exists. So um, how many of you believe in uh, or believe in the idea that um, all genders should be treated equally. Can I have a show of hands? So congratulations, you're all feminists. So, um, but like I said, the word feminism has received a lot of negative press, but how many of you use your social media or WhatsApp or any form of online communication to talk about equality or any of these social justice views that you believe in? Do you use your social media channels to talk about that? Anyone? Okay, that's good to hear. Um, but, okay, so, um, but that's, um, so that, that was like maybe four people in this audience, but... Uh, Can I go to the next slide? When, just to contrast with that, when was the last time you heard a sexist joke? When is the last time you heard about the nagging wife? or the fact that women are stupid or like bad at math or can't drive. I mean, just open your family WhatsApp groups and I'm pretty sure you'll find like 20 of those jokes right now this morning. So how, when's the last time uh, or in, in the last you know week have you come across something that uh, places women at, uh, it denigrates women? When's the last time you heard a sexist joke? Yesterday. Yesterday? <laughs> yeah. Um, how like do you, are you all part of family WhatsApp groups where you get a lot of forwards and how many of these forwards are about nagging wives or the, the dumb bahu or yeah <laughs> okay so next so these are just um, just these random sexist memes that I picked up from the internet when I was preparing for this talk and I thought it was really funny to put these two side by side okay so the first one says control a woman Okay, and uh, this is a remote control and it says, the button says sleep, sex, food, uh, moaning, winning, forget, remove clothes, clean, cook, leave, say yes, move on, say no, etc. Okay, so this is a remote control, how you want your ideal woman to be, right, at, at your fingertips. And the next one says, I, <laughs> ironically, it's pretty funny juxtaposed with this. If you want to change the world, do it while you're single. Once you're married, you can't even change the TV channel. So what do they want? Do they want a woman that they can 
control or do they believe that they are being controlled by their wives and they can't even change the or they don't even have control of the remote right but so these i mean how often do you see uh, posts like this okay next slide this is another these are other ones um if your class is full of pretty girls you are probably studying a useless course i studied english literature okay i did humanities so i got this a lot in college i studied in a technical institute so everyone um, all the engineers thought we were just you know there to beautify the campus and our degree really meant nothing so any any disciplines that are considered traditionally feminine or more women take those courses those courses have less value humanities ko koi bhi kar sakta hai right um the next one is a hindi one tu kitna bhi kar le ignore no sorry uh, i will love you more and more this is all our bollywood stereotypes rolled into one ki if you say no i don't care i'm going to keep pursuing you i'm going to keep um, you know chadhaving you and uh, eventually you um, you will fall for me which is not true nobody falls for chadhaving but yeah right so this these are sex jokes so this is what the internet is this is like 90% of the internet okay when um, you're scrolling through your whatsapp forwards or your facebook feed this is um the kind of crap excuse my language that you are expo exposed to so next slide uh this is a comment that my organizing fellows were we recently published this so uh this is a man and a woman who are typing the exact same thing that women face a lot of abuse online which is true women face a lot of abuse online right when a guy says this he is praised for being progressive he has his credentials in check he's saying he's called woke he is called a male like a great male ally and we need more men like you and we do we do need more men like him talking about um sexism and calling out sexism but what happens when a woman talks about the same thing get off the internet why are you talking why are you complaining if you face abuse online then don't don't be online get off and then you're you're called a feminazi and you're abused and uh, not all men not all men are like this okay i am not like this and therefore this problem doesn't exist these are the kinds of this actually happened to me uh, not about not the same thing but i once posted on twitter um about uh, so i did my uh, master's thesis on the ramayan and uh, not getting into that but i posted something that was critical of ram and uh, about the way that ram treated sita and oh my god i got like flooded with abuse from right wing twitter accounts like for 4 hours non stop non stop my twitter notifications were flooded who does this oh these bengalis are all communists or who does this girl think she is have you even read the ramayan do you know anything about the ramayan um, i kind of did my master's thesis on it but that doesn't matter and another guy on my one of my followers on twitter he said that he had posted the exact same thing like the same day i think it was a response to something else that was going on on twitter so he had also posted something about this but he didn't receive any uh, any hate so when a woman posts something online it's very provocative like who is she to talk about something you know who is she to have an opinion so this is something that uh, we've seen i've seen personally that happens on the internet next slide so um what i want to talk about is like completely encapsulated by this one incident that happened earlier this year Rishi Kapoor right who doesn't know him one of the most powerful men in india in terms of his wealth his family name his legacy his caste upper caste his um gender he's male male privilege caste privilege he's he has so much power he has so much of a voice okay uh, so i'll come back to this slide but can you just go ahead so he had posted a bunch of things about um merit so people like rishi kapoor who have a lot of privilege just by virtue of being um wealthy upper caste and a man he has privilege and he and his family uh, so he spoke about how privilege is nothing man and everything that his family has achieved or everything that the gandhi family has achieved has been due to merit okay and this merit is a very um loaded word because are we saying that those who don't like you know people who don't have this kind of social capital who aren't men who aren't upper caste uh, do they not have merit no they just don't have the opportunities to succeed in the same way that these these men do right so he posted about uh, the merit of his khandan and how they all made it where they did like ranveer kapoor made it where he did because of his merit and not because you know his family had enough money to pump in 
uh, money to his films even though he had like you know 20 flops or whatever right so then next slide there is this um, Twitter account by this woman called Shivani Chandan. It's her. She uses a pseudonym. She's a 16. I think she's in her teens. 16 year old, I think. Dalit girl from Punjab. And she she uses a pseudonym because she's afraid of violence. Because she uses her Twitter account very powerfully to call out these men, to call out privilege, to call out things like this where people are caste blind, gender blind, blind to the privileges that they have. So she. Uh, she tweeted this right in response to Rishi Kapoor. I haven't forgotten his son's film. Also after flop Savarya, he got chance on merit to flop again on Rocket Singh. So F your merit. Also still recovering from Karina's over acting, acting in uh, Prem Ki Diwani to compensate for meritocracy, Junior Virgin. F your merit. So she did, she did a whole thread calling out this merit. Okay. And what did Rishi Kapoor do? A 65 year old man who is infinitely more privileged and has infinitely more social capital than she does. He sent her a DM, a uh, direct message on Twitter saying, fuck you bitch. He's 65, she's 16, okay? He says, fuck you bitch. And then he uh, blocks her so that she can't respond to him. So how does a man like Rishi Kapoor think that it's okay with all of his age and wealth and class uh, background to say something like this to this 16 year old girl who's merely criti like critiquing him on Twitter right and this sort of encapsulates everything that women have to face online because if you if you put out an opinion you're silenced you're said get out of here you're abused and you you're, you're told that your opinion has no like does not stand like does not hold any water so get out like go away you don't deserve to be here my voice is the only one that deserves to be heard right okay so now we can go ahead so the internet is a public space just like the markets or the bus station is a public space so is the internet and whatever the whatever are the um, you know the uh, tensions or like the forces that we experience in public spaces like we experience sexism we experience patriarchy in public spaces we are uncomfortable we are at risk of being harassed we're at risk of being raped all of those exist right as a woman in a public space there is a lot of uh, stress and fear and uh, that goes into being in a public space the internet has it, it you are not magically isolated from the social structure just because you're on the internet just because you're on the cyber in, on cyberspace doesn't mean all of those forces all of those power structures don't exist so the internet is a public space and oh next, next oh no can you go back sorry so when the internet is like this, right? When Rishi Kapoor is saying fuck you to a 16 year old girl or when you see those memes that call women stupid every opportunity they get. What, what can we do as feminists, as women, as people who believe that women ought not to be denigrated for being women? What are women around the internet doing? Okay, so this sort of brings me back to um, the video that uh, I was introduced with. Um, I didn't make it specifically as a response to all of this, obviously, but um, last year I made this video mostly as a joke. It's called BR Pondati. Pondati means wife in Tamil. And um, it was, I used actual matrimonial ads actually. So I looked, went up, went online on the internet and looked up what are the criteria that they ask for women and what are the criteria that they ask for men in matrimonial ads. Women are always supposed to be beautiful, men are always supposed to be rich or um have high education but for women the standard is mostly beauty right so yeah we can play my video now so this is something that i made last year and it went viral So here's our number Just call me 
Stop the tumble up. You're up to the It was a joke. Uh, it was made overnight, like <laughs> at 3 a.m. in the morning, because I was bored and I was at my friend's house. So, but it blew up. And why did it blow up? Because people resonated with it, right? It called out double standards in uh, matrimony, and it critiqued all of these um, really sexist, um, like uh, expectations that you have for brides, right? Which you don't have for uh, grooms. So. Uh, I think the reason that it blew up is because people resonated with something and it was different from all of the other, you know, sexist or these boring, tired, old stereotypes that keep playing, that, like the ones that I showed you before of these, of, of these stupid wife jokes and how your wife keeps nagging you and etc, etc and how you should just like, women are just made for sex and food, like to cook you food and have sex with you. So, so I think uh, this is an example of a feminist subculture, right? It's a, it's a, like you're fighting back, and you're saying that I'm not going to, you know, take um, the stuff that you throw at me. I'm not going to take those uh, sexist memes lying down. I'm going to, yeah, talk about that. So, um, so I'm just going to run you through some other uh, people who are, who are making a difference, or who are just not doing it as a larger, you know, they are actually doing it as a political statement, but. These are other uh, feminist subcultures that exist online and, and like people like me and uh, people like other people who identify as feminists are now subscribing to these people and because it's, it's very inspiring when you see other people reclaiming the internet and so uh, I think why it's powerful is because what are these, whose voices are these sexist jokes, right? They're men's voices and women's voices aren't really... Um, given space on the internet or their concerns like for example on my twitter i used to be very uncomfortable about talking about say my periods which is but if i'm in a room with just women i can talk about my periods like really openly and then i thought why am i so uncomfortable talking about periods because i feel like you the internet is like this male dominated space and you're uncomfortable about talking about periods in front of men because it's weird or it's taboo or it's icky or but then I thought, who cares? Who cares if men are grossed out by me talking about periods? I will talk to the women on my uh, Twitter, right? And that was very liberating for me to just think that what I'm saying is for women. I'm talking to women because, and I'm a woman's voice and other women will relate to me. And so now I talk about periods. I talk about whatever I want on the internet. And for me, that realization was very liberating, yeah. So this is an Instagram artist called Sara Nakhvi. She's uh, I really love her work. So she's an embroider. She's in NID, uh, Ahmedabad, I think, and she's uh, she embroiders and draws. So she makes art about periods. You know, these are things that women are have no problem talking within closed rooms by themselves, but you're hesitant to talk about it in public spaces. You're hesitant to talk about your sex life in public spaces, even though men talk about their sex, men brag about their sex life, but women don't talk about their sex lives because it's slutty to have a sex life, right, or whatever. So these are women who don't care, who stop caring. They, she makes like this really nice art, I think, um, about very normal processes that all women uh, face. And so the other one, the other one is about how bras cage breasts and bras are really constricting for women. And the other one is about is just different kinds of breasts. And breasts are always marketed as a as a object for male consumption. And what she did was like take it back. And she said like I will draw my breasts, and my breasts are not to be sexualized. My breasts are not to be objectified for you to get aroused by. My breasts and other women's breasts are just parts of our bodies and I will draw them and so what, right? So this is uh, someone who does things like this and 
Uh, this is something that happened um, in Bangalore this year, uh, in New Year's uh, 2017, a lot of women were molested. Uh, in ba and what happened after the molestation, the mass molestation, was when people started criticizing it, men got really defensive and started tweeting saying, not all men. Not all men are harassers, not all men are molesters, which is fine, not all men are molesters, but a lot of men are. And that's not the, like, men's defensiveness is not what we need to be talking about right now. Women got harassed on, on the pub, in public streets on New Year's Day. And if, that's what we need to focus. We don't need to focus about men's hurt feelings at, at being um, categorized as potentially a harasser. Like, nobody, like, that's not the focus. The focus is that women's rights over public spaces are being um, curtailed because because we are harassed or we're so the fact that not all men began trending was very annoying for people uh, like my organization feminism in india we were very annoyed that the conversation went to um, privileging men's emotions uh, rather than talking about the actual issue which is that women are at risk in public spaces and that needs to be stopped so we put out this tweet where we asked women to start sharing this is like the me too campaign but this happened much earlier uh, this is earlier this year january this year where we asked women to start sharing stories of their harassment, next slide, uh, with yes all women. And a lot of women did. And finally, yes all women started trending. And because it was so powerful, just like the Me Too campaign, which now we all know, it's so powerful for women to go on the internet and talk about this stuff which is otherwise hushed, which is otherwise silenced, to go and say, yes, I was harassed. Yes, this happened to me and other women will relate to you, other women will offer support and men will offer support to you. And so th that was reclaiming the internet, right? You take back the tech, you take back the internet and you say, this is my space too and my experiences and my, um, like, yeah, what I go through deserves to be heard and deserves a space. So yeah, and actually, next slide. Before this, um, uh, we also try to like reclaim that hashtag. So not all men is supposed to be like, not all men are harassers, not all men are like that, not all men are sexist. But you know what, that doesn't matter because when you say not all men, you're completely taking away, you're not thinking of the fact that you're taking taking away our experiences from us. You're taking away the fact that people did, like we did experience this. So we reclaimed that hashtag and we said not all men can realize that it's about, it's not about them, right? It's about us. It's about our experiences and we deserve that space right now to be heard. So yeah, next slide. This is another um, Facebook page called Spoiled Modern Indian Women, which made this uh, uh, this thing called um, Real Life Superheroes, where they took um, these sexist stereotypes, but then turned it around to what women were actually doing with their real life career. So a Diamond is a girl's best friend during her radiocarbon dating research. Or people tell me that I'm not too sharp because as a singer, I always stay in key. So I thought it was really, uh, it was really funny because they took those stereotypes and they turned them on their head and they said, you know, women are beyond these stereotypes and these stereotypes are simply untrue. So yeah, uh, that sort of brings me to the end of the talk, uh, my talk and I wanted to bring it back to you. So when you, have you faced anything online where you put out an opinion and you're shut down or when you're talking about something serious like a social or political issue people choose to derail that by talking about how pretty your display picture is you know or how pretty your smile is or what what a nice tattoo you have or um or when you're talking about it your voice is considered irrelevant because you don't know what you're talking about because you're a woman has, has that happened to anyone here um have you faced that yeah yeah so how do you resist like how do you how do you combat that do you have any strategies pointing out how sexist that is yeah and i found it really helpful to have a network of women who will support you who will come and say that's not okay you can't just minimize her voice like that that's sexist you know having a community and that's something else the internet does and the internet has been so helpful in doing is forming feminist solidarities with women like now because of my work also I'm connected to feminists across India, I'm connected to feminists outside India and it's so um, liberating, it's so nice to be able to connect it, to be able to connect, be connected to these women who will, who are all you know fighting the patriarchy in their in their own ways and uh, who will support you when when, when something like this happens, like Feminism in India, my uh, organization, we get trolled a lot by um, right-wing groups and stuff when we critique, say, Hindu, Hindu festivals. 
and then it's it's uh, non-stop the the trolling and the abuse is non-stop and then it's very it takes a toll on uh, my emotional health because i manage my twitter and we had like two days of trolling like recently and it's very depressing so then we reach out we tweet about it we post screenshots of what you know the abuse that we're facing and we have our entire um, our followers who come in and say like who who you know like because as a single person managing this Twitter handle, it's impossible for me to respond to everyone. But then we have this community that forms, and and the internet helps in building that community, and it's really it's really helpful. So I would encourage you to like try that. Just reach out to your friends and ask them to come help you. And the most important thing is to not let it silence you, right? If you are told that you, your voice or your opinion should not be out there, that don't let that get to you because like it's a pub like I said, the internet is a public space. And the only way we get uh, rid of harassment in public spaces is if we occupy it. And we refuse to let ourselves stay inside the house. We will go out in the streets at night. We will talk about our, uh, we will talk about sexism on the internet. So yeah, uh, that's my talk. <laughs> so thank you very much for listening. Awesome. Thank you. Sorry? Yeah. Uh, anyone, anyone with question and answers, uh, any questions to talk Or comments about? or experiences that you faced? Yes. Yeah, please. Shortcomings of the virtual presence of feminism? No, I don't think so. Like, my entire work is about expanding the virtual presence of feminism. Has anyone ever sent to a mail to one that giving their opinion? I know you're, it's right that there, are, there could be no shortcomings. There should be no shortcomings. I mean, I don't know if you mean like feminism in the warped way that it's misunderstood. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's then what we try to do in my workplace is we try to educate that feminism isn't a, it isn't misandry, it isn't about hating men, it isn't about female supremacy. So we try to educate what feminism is, and then we obviously believe that the ultimate goal is gender equality. So uh, yeah, I think I don't know if that answers your question. Okay. So I have another question. Uh, do you think there is a like, face of feminism in the rural areas? Is different from the face of feminism? So how can we approach them as well? Of course there is and as a digital platform there is we are very limited in the fact that we cannot reach uh, like our reach does not go to um, the rural areas but that I mean for sure but there are uh, efforts that exist um, in India that are trying to you know help women in rural areas or give them their voices etc. So there are there are a lot of NGOs doing a lot of good work. So. Our, we are very aware that we are a urban and we are a digital platform so there are limitations to that because there is not a lot of digital penetration in India but yeah so we are aware that that is we are limited to urban spaces or spaces that have access to uh, English oh, and who can understand English but we are trying to sort of talk to now uh, make uh, connect with other community radio platforms who write, who talk about stuff in Hindi and maybe expand. But obviously that's a endeavor that we will keep trying to expand. Yeah. Um, anyone else? And especially about yeah, especially about your experiences on the internet. If you want to talk about that, I, I think when it comes to resisting, we always think of resisting men. Yeah. But I have come across even in my family a lot of women for sure who say bullshit partner like to bullshit like um bahu to bahu hi khad So how do you resist women? I mean, because I feel like slapping women like that. Like I don't have time for you. Yeah. If you're gonna say nonsense like yeah. this. So on the internet, yeah. when women, have you ever dealt with For sure, there? of course. How do you respond to them? Because I, I mean yeah, because so feminism, like I said, it wasn't, isn't about anti-men, it's anti-patriarchy and patriarchy affects all of us. We are all conditioned by patriarchy, we are all patriarchal just by virtue of being born in this world, right? And women condition it as much as men. So it's called um, internalized misogyny where women internalize those notions that make like, oh, we, we, to, we can't do this, ye to kar sakte hai, or whatever, right? Um, so yeah, I guess as a feminist, my response would be to 
try and understand where they're coming from. Like I get that these are the things that you've been drilled into you, which I think should be the response to anyone who's patriarchal, but um, these are conditioning, this is conditioning that you have been subject to and I'm going to try to help, like to make, like uh, tell you my side of it and why I think that that's bullshit and you just see how it works. But yeah, we have, I mean, like I said, we get trolled by right-wing accounts a lot and a lot of them are women and they say the most misogynist things and it makes me so sad when you're like, are you not on your own team, <laughs> you know? So yeah, yeah. Thank you, Asuna. Yeah. Uh, All right. Thank session. you. Thanks so a lot for your.